Welcome to the Getting Married Multiculturally podcast. Uh, I have Nadia here from Lebanon. Nadia. Nadia. Am I yeah. saying it right? Nadia, yeah. Nadia. N-A-D-I-A. Okay. N-A-D-I-A. And her husband, Ali, who joined us. Hopefully he will stay, but we'll see. It is always just so much fun for me to talk with people from odd outside of the my culture from other side of the world especially somebody who has totally different culture we are having easter here in america today is easter sunday and yeah uh, you, easter sunday yeah happy easter <laughs> thank you and you guys are in lebanon currently so uh we're gonna be talking about your wedding You just recently got married a few weeks ago, yeah. I guess. <laughs> Our wedding, yeah, two and a half weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Which wasn't planned, wasn't planned to happen that way, right? You had a quarantine wedding. No, it wasn't, it wasn't planned that way at all. We were supposed to get married. We were supposed to have, I'm, so I'm from Kuwait. You're, you're, you've got, you're talking about cross-cultural marriages. I'm from Kuwait and my husband's from Lebanon. So we were going to have like a, a Kuwaiti kind of wedding. It's called a... What is it called? Uh, it's called... Uh, a yelwa. A yelwa. Yelwe. <laughs> Yelwe. <laughs> okay. And so it's, it's, a, it's a traditional Kuwaiti thing. And then we were going to do something. And it, my husband runs Italian restaurants. So he, uh, he loves the Italian culture. And we wanted to do a wedding in Italy. And then obviously all of those dreams started crumbling when Corona came about, um, and it was my, my mom and my family live in Kuwait and I'm here in Lebanon and, um, I work here as well. So, so we were, so then the, it became difficult to even travel. And then it's like my husband kind of knew that this wasn't going to be a one week or two week thing. It wasn't even going to be a one month or two month thing. He knew that it was going to probably take a while. And so I think he had that instinct. He was like, well, it makes no sense to, he kind of just told me, let's call your dad and let's do that. We even did the whole thing with a cleric. Um, the cleric was on online with us and he married us online. On a video call. On a video call. <laughs> What's a cleric? Is that like a uh, cleric, the like officiant? The person, yeah, the officiant, the, our sheikh. So we're Muslim, so we have a sheikh. Okay. We're from different sects of Islam, but we had a sheikh marry us on video call, and then he sent us the he sent us the contract on WhatsApp. So we've had an entirely digital uh, legal part of our of our union of our marriage was entirely digital, and then I think um, the wedding part it's really whatever we decide is a wedding. It's not really what other people decide is a wedding. So we just decided we were going to wear, you know, wear our Sunday best and take pictures in our garden and celebrate and do like a little ceremony and swap our fingers. Our, I mean, our, swap our rings because he gave me a ring uh, when he proposed to me. And then so we swapped our rings in the garden and we have a little video of that. And then that was our it was just me and me and him. And and then that was our wedding. I mean, that's incredible, but I agree with you. Wedding is what you want it to be at the end of the day. So did you have the original wedding date, date already booked? Did you have everything? It was going to be around April 20th. My, actually, my cousin was supposed to get married before me. My cousin was supposed to get married March 20th in London. And she's a Kuwaiti and she's marrying a Kuwaiti. And me and Ali were supposed to attend this wedding. And then Corona came and she had to... You know, it was a difficult day to, for her the day that she sent out the the postponement of the wedding, the letters to postpone because nobody could get on a plane at that point. So it was ridiculous. And I feel really bad for her because she she can't get a refund. She can't. They ha, they they're making her do the wedding just at a later date. But we don't even know when would be a good time to schedule that. So she's in the middle of a wedding nightmare, really, because trying to plan that without knowing when your wedding is. It's quite, kind of a nightmare. We were going to do ours April 20th in Kuwait, um, right before Ramadan. So about, I think it would be next week, something like next week, we would be in Kuwait and, and doing the yellow, where I would wear green, 
and we would have, the, I would be sitting on a chair and everything is green. This is the tradition. And I would have like a green, um, a green uh, cloth on top of my head and there'd be little girls like praying over me and the cloth would have to hit my head. And I'd, and it's just, it's like a, a really old tradition. Mm -hmm. And then he comes in and then we have, we cut a cake and uh, you know, and with our family, like it was still going to be small. It was going to be with my grandmother, who is uh, really elderly. It was going to uh, be in her I, I house. I don't have to be wearing green. He wasn't going to wear green. <laughs> he was just going to wear his suit, but I was going to wear green. Green and gold is what I'm allowed to wear. And then we were going to do our our wedding in in Europe and in the summer, sometime in the summer. It was maybe like in September, something like that. But it just seemed like even then everything was so uncertain. So I, I think he had the the wisdom to, to say that it doesn't make sense to wait any longer. And in all senses and circumstances, I think he made the right decision for both of us. And and so we just we just decided that we were going to do our own little thing and it was OK with us. Mm hmm. It's good that the both of you were on the same page. So when you decided, can you maybe share a little bit of like practical advice? How did you go with switching the date? Maybe on, did you have to get a marriage license and then you switched the date on it? Or how did you um, manage to re reschedule with some of the vendors? I'm, I know that you only We didn't plan have, anything. So you we didn't plan, okay. So I, so I was in a better situation than my cousin who already had her caterer, already had her, her you know, all, or, already had her florist, all of these things. I hadn't arranged any of these things yet. I was, we were going to see how it goes. And so that, that's why I'm so thankful that we, were, we had avoided that nightmare because knowing my husband being in the food business, F&B and hospitality business, he had the foresight to mm -hmm. see that it was going to be a nightmare trying to plan it in the future, especially with these, in this kind of circumstances. So we didn't have to postpone anything. In terms of how we got our marriage license, it was the morning of the, mor the day that my husband said, okay, we're going to get married today. Mm -hmm. he, he, got, he got the officiant on, on a video call on the same day. He had spoken to my dad because my dad, in our culture, my dad has to... Uh, my father has to approve or has to be a witness. So the sheikh had to call my father. And, and so he, ar he arranged everything within this. Like, I, I wasn't even ready for it. It took like uh, An two hour, hours. Two hours. Within two hours. Wow. He, had he had said, okay, let's get married today. And then within two hours, we were married. And, and the next day, we got our contract. With, with our wedding day and everything. But we have to uh, subscribe the paper at the court when the court opens. Oh, so because our courts are all closed right now. Right. Um, it's, uh, so it's been approved by the... So we, are, we have to register our, um, our marriage once the courts open again. Register the contract once the courts, courts open again. Okay. But we're legally married. Yeah, that, that, that could be a good op to sign the papers and then legally, you know, bring papers in to the court after they open up. That's, that's, that's a really good option for couples. I mean, we would have done it if it was open, but mm. the, no we had no other, we have no other choice. We would have registered our union if it was open, but we had no other choice. Mm -hmm. So... You decided to get married and then two, two hours later you were having your wedding, right? Yeah, two hours, he had told me, all right, put something on your head, let's go, we're doing it now. And I had nothing on my, I, I had no makeup on my face, I was sitting for, I had no idea what to do. And we were on video call with this officiant and he marries us, he says these things, these words, uh, do you accept this, do you accept, he says all of these words, you know, that all of the words of a marriage and I, all of a sudden I was in the middle of getting married and I, I didn't even I didn't even I didn't wake up that day thinking I was going to get married right yeah so, so it just kind of happened that way and um and then I and then I went back I went to the kitchen and cooked and we ate and it was a normal day other than that <laughs> <laughs> how how did you feel emotionally how was it you said you didn't know you're gonna get married what kind of I, what's going through your mind that whole time? I think emotionally, I think it was when like I have 
I have a 20 year old dress that I put on the day that we were going to, we, we did a wedding. Right. And he had this cute suit, this nice suit. And we, we went in our garden and, um, and I think that was the day that I kind of got uh, emotional. I kind of felt something inside, like even if nobody was there, even if we had no, it was, it, that, that was really all that mattered. I think Corona did something for us is that it makes us think on a molecular scale. It makes us think more on a more essential scale. That's why it's, only essential workers are allowed to work. Only essential parts of, only things that have, that have to exist to make the, Otherwise, everything is at a standstill. And I think us getting married that, this way, I think it's a gift more than anything else. I'm really, really thankful because I think it made me appreciate what it means to be with my husband. And I don't need to, I don't need all of that fanfare. Um, even though I thought I did, I was going through my bridezilla phase. Mm -hmm. I want the wedding in Italy and I want this and I want that. And I, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I wanted all of these things. I wanted all of the dresses and I tried on four dresses and I wanted to buy four dresses and they were all fabulous. And then like God slaps me in the face and said, this is how you're going to get married. And I'm, I, I think I'm really blessed that way. I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah, I agree. What would you say to those couples who are struggling to have a quarantine wedding like you did because they would want family and friends to witness them to be part of their wedding that's why they're struggling that's why they're trying to postpone it instead of just getting married get over with it you know I mean I would have really loved for my family to be there my mom and dad but at the end of the day I'm really happy it was just the two of us I think if they if couples around the world did want to uh, get did want to get married and and I, it, despite of this circumstance, I think, in fact, it's actually a really romantic thing. I think it's a really loving thing to do. I, I can't wait to tell our kids the story, tell them how this happened. I think um, I think it's really wonderful. I'm, I'm really thankful that my husband decided he was he wanted to marry me that day. Um, and, and I think they should just go ahead with it. It's what you make of it. At the end of the day, a, a wedding is what the couple decides is a wedding. It's not what other people is, is say is a wedding. If a bride wants to wear white, she can wear white. If she wants to wear orange, she can wear orange. If she wants to wear black, she can wear black. The couple makes their own decision uh, as to what makes a wedding. It's not to other people, right? Yeah. So it's sad if they can't have their... Like me, I couldn't have... My, my mom is in another country. and my, But uh, it, it, all that mattered really was that me and him were there for that promise. And what I love the most about ours is that we were next to an olive tree and this olive tree is 200 years old. So I think it gave us a lot of energy being around this olive tree. And I think this olive tree kind of blessed our wedding and hopefully blessed our, our union and our love. And it lasts that long, as long as this olive tree. So it's you, you give value to the things that happen in your wedding and whatever you create of your wedding. Um, the only thing I feel bad about are for people who made deals with vendors and caterers and who have paid money and down payments like my cousin. I feel really, really bad for her because uh, because it might be difficult planning when that she can do it now. They have a tentative date for November and hopefully by November things will be better, but we don't know. Then once we get closer to November and we have an idea whether it's possible or not, she might have to reschedule again. It's really, and in our culture, her, that wedding is really important. It's, it's, it's when she is allowed to then be with her, with her husband and allowed to then get pregnant, you know? So she's postponing a lot of things, a lot of landmarks in her life because she put down this money and it, she, you want, she went for an expensive wedding, right? Or she, you know, somewhat, yes. you know, it, you know, she put down money for it to celebrate with all of her friends and now we don't know when that's going to happen. So I feel bad for people who, but we were lucky that we, we were just planning it like this and we were going with the flow and living our love story the way it was and, and, and that's what happened with us. Yeah, I mean, if you don't have financial lost then then just go for it i would say and not that don't hold it back and like you mentioned uh, i think we would have postponed for a year at least we yeah. would have post we would put our whole lives i mean I, you know and it wouldn't have been comfortable we're in the middle of a really really difficult global situation 
I needed to be next to my husband. And I think my husband figured that out. And so nothing at the end mattered more than what us needing to be with each other in this time. I mean, it's a, it, this is a, a time that nobody has ever seen anything like this around the world. No life in our lifetime, in anybody's lifetime, we have never seen anything this difficult and this trying. And I think we need the people closest to us right now. So I need, I think we need um, our husband, we need to be with people that, that we love and love us because it's a difficult time. I'm sure a lot of people are getting divorced now, just like a lot of people are getting married. <laughs> it's um, true. It's, it's, it's one of those tests you know that it's either gonna make you or break you you know so I'm praying that knock on wood because we got married in this time I think we might you know it's a really tough test we're gonna make it through I hope is there anything for me it, Any do you want to ask anything to yes. my husband yes I would love to Ali do you how did you live through this day what was your feeling what were you going through I mean you were the mostly the one who made that decision to get married Actually, there are two days. There are two days, not one day. The first day when we called the sheikh. When we called the officiant. Yeah, and her dad. And the second day when we uh, when we fixed ourselves, <laughs> we called the hairdresser to fix our hair. <laughs> and uh, we dress up and we took picture in our garden. So uh, the first day was, uh, I think, uh, this was me, uh, my decision in life are like this, <laughs> are uh, surprising. These are my decisions. So uh, I said it's like an opportunity to us to take it now and not to wait like six, seven months. So it's not worth it at all. So we took the decision and uh, it, was, uh, it was fantastic for me when I called her dad and he told me, yes, go for it. Uh, it was nice. It was the apogee for me. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> What's apogee? The, 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 the yani, peak. Yani, it was the peak. It was the uh, climax for him. He yeah. was really happy. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. And the second day when we took the pic and we uh, uploaded it on our social media and the uh, people started uh, uh, celebrating with us and wishing us a, a great marriage, uh, it was amazing. We felt everybody's love. Yeah, yeah. There, there was no headache, no pressure. We were very light, very happy. Uh, I think it was the best decision. Better than preparing for like six, seven months and get worried if the people will like our mm -hmm. <laughs> wedding they or like not. like our wedding or it not. It was amazing. And now we are, so we are planning to, to get a baby, to cook a baby. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> You have time for that I now. think uh, it's going to be very fast. <laughs> it's the fastest wedding. <laughs> the fastest life. <laughs> I I really love that. I know that it's kind of um, a tradition or a request for you to Ali to call her dad. But I love that gesture that you kind of involve the family and asking for for permission or are they okay with you getting married in the house without them being there i think that's such a good way to connect your family and make them feel all love together right yeah he has to yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think he he felt like he need, he had everything he needed right when you called my dad yeah he felt like that's it that's it mm -hmm. but then the other things were just formalities yes mm-hmm mm -hmm. I will let you go, Ali, if you have to go and we will just Thank continue. Thank you so much. Nice Thank to meet you. you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. And I also uh, wanted to say that I love how you mentioned the tree, the olive tree. And that's actually how I discovered you. I saw those beautiful pictures. Did you yeah. have a photographer or how did you how did you take those photos? So it was the, the, sec the security guy from our building who took the photos. Oh, my God. <laughs> so we asked him to come down we said please can you take it like this and can you take it like this and then I edited it a little bit just the colors and the get get the colors right but it was sunset I, I already knew I wanted it at sunset and I wanted it close to my olive tree and we, it, we just came out with what we came out with I think there's about four or five pictures that I like from there it's just me and him 
and uh, in in this 20 year old dress and with this 200 year old tree and uh, (laughs) was it a, a yellow dress or does it just looks like it's yellow no, I think it was it was it's beige. It's beige, like it's like okay. an off white uh, beige, uh, um, like a sh- not a chiffon. What do you call it? A tool, like a yeah, and and like just a tank top. It's really really simple. It's it's nothing too much. I remember getting it for like a prom kind of thing when I was like fourteen or something, or you know, or twelve or something like that. And then I and then it fit, so wow. I wore it again. I think my boobs are a bit bigger, but I mean, <laughs> it still fits. So, and I love. I had no other option. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to look like a bride somehow. That was yeah. the closest thing that I had. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think we all have something that looks like a brightish dress that would you know make exactly good any white i thought you know I, I thought any white dress any any or any dress that makes you it doesn't even have to be white i was just talking about it any dress that makes you feel beautiful makes you feel like this is a special day and and when you're looking in your husband's eyes you're gonna feel like okay so this is a, he he feels me feeling beautiful and and this is a moment that we're gonna i wanted the pictures were really important for me because one day when we have kids i want to be able to show my kids that this was a, a special moment for your parents, that, that this is what we had, this is what we did for each other, and we did it ourselves, and we, we really didn't need anything else. We did it in our garden, and, and this moment, uh, there was, and I think what, what was wonderful when we celebrated with our parents and family on social media um, was that I think everybody mentioned that, uh, that it feels like there's lots of love in the photo, mm-hmm. and it feels like that it's just, there's nothing else needed. It's just a lot of love. And so that was important for me for our kids one day. And mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like because it's just the two of you, it might not feel like it's a wedding or something, yeah. you know, as it should be traditionally. But once you put it out on social media, all those pictures kind of become you know, more real when people give you feedback, right? You know, all of these positive talks. We felt so much love. I really, like, I want to thank everybody who gave us love on that day. Like, it was, it's a difficult time for all of us. We're all living really, really difficult times. And I'm really glad that some people said to us, like, oh, you you shifted our mood. Like, uh, some people said to us, like, it's been so miserable. All of a sudden, we see this wonderful, good news, you know, this news of, you deciding because it's a really kind of ballsy move. I think it's a really <laughs> brave move for us to independently decide we were going to do it. That I think I even surprised my mom. You know, like I just told her, "Mom, I just got married," um, and and then we just we took the photos and we dropped the photos, and everybody felt like they were there with us. I mean, th- there was so much love. I mean, I think uh, which we really appreciated. We felt like we were already celebrating with our friends and family. They called us and everybody was calling us and making us feel really warm and loved. And what else can we, you know, in this difficult time, that was the best we could have done. And it's amazing. Yeah, I don't think anybody that I heard that would have regret it to do this quarantine wedding you know I think at the end everybody's just kind of glad to do it because I I work in events and I work in production and I work in things like that and because I know that however much time you put into planning something at the end of the day there's always going to be something that doesn't go exactly right and as someone who plans things I know that oh next time I'm going to do you're never completely satisfied Mm -hmm. with how it comes out And although I had these wonderful plans of what my wedding would be like, and a wedding has so much pressure on it because it's like that this one big monumentous event, right? Um, I knew it, like, I'm so glad it happened the way it happened because however way it it would have panned out, it wouldn't have been exactly how I planned it or how I wanted it or it would have been too much pressure or stress thinking about everyone. So I'd rather in the future when things come down have multiple little wedding celebrations with all our friends and family from wherever it is and just continue celebrating our wedding this is my excuse to continue celebrating our wedding because i never had a real wedding uh-huh. so, <laughs> so now every time i'll have i'll have dinners and i'll have this and i'll have that and and oh, i hope I everybody that. will want to 
That's, <laughs> That's <true>. my excuse. Because <laughs> I was going to ask you if you're planning to maybe have a wedding after everything settles down when we're back in our normal life. But I guess I'm you just want to... Ten. Yes. ten weddings. I love that. They're all going to be like little dinners and with the court and, and uh, celebrations and, uh, you know, small things with different networks of people. And it'll be fun. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I wanted to ask you if um, are there any cultural differences between the two of you that maybe kind of comes in your mind, even relationship wise or wedding wise or living together, something that came up that you would like to, you know, share with us? Yeah, I mean, I think in general, we're, we're a little bit more conservative. Uh, uh, my husband is Shiite and I'm, uh, uh, I'm Sunni. So we're from two different sects of Islam uh, and we're from two different countries as well. So, but um, because we consider ourselves a modern couple, we consider ourselves people who are more, um, who, are, who, who are just in general exposed and who have achieved things in, in our lives. Um, you know, I, I don't think I was ever raised to aspire just to marriage, which I thank my mother for. I wasn't really raised to aspire solely to marriage i i think i achieved a lot of, of my own goals and him as well he's an entrepreneur and he's achieved quite a lot in his life i think we just happened to cross each other's paths and we realized that we should be together uh so i think what transcends culture is um is state of mind is um is a kind of inner culture is um an awareness of oneself and one's goals uh, kind of transcends uh, tradition and and um, geographic culture or um, or religious culture or those kinds of uh, traditions and so we in in the Muslim world we don't have that moment where a guy goes on his knees and you know and proposes with a what's it called it's more him talking it's a very formal thing where he talks to my father and they sit down together and they make this decision. Um, he kind of did that when we, when, you know, we had a little, you know, um, meet up with my family and, uh, they got a chance to get to know each other on vacation, which was really nice. And then I went on a detox. I had recently quit smoking and, um, uh, and he had helped me. He had really supported me through that push to quit smoking. I've been a smoker for a really long time and I quit smoking and he had really supported me through that. And I went to Sri Lanka for a detox and a yoga, um, a yoga uh, workshop. And he surprised me in Sri Lanka. I knew he was coming. But on the first day that he came in, he came in with, a, with an engagement ring. And he had the whole dining table, the whole dining room playing the song that is a song that's relating to us. Uh, you know, it's a love song. It's a Lebanese love song about getting married. And then he had... Uh, he had the ring in a box and he showed it to me and I couldn't believe it. And I, th I just didn't think that I was going to have that moment. I thought it was, you know, like we're, we're, our, you know, we don't really do it, but like, I really wanted that moment deep down inside. So it gave me that moment. And it was just, I was like a little girl having that moment. So I think we made our own relationship culture. Really. I think a couple makes their own relationship culture when he felt, he felt like I wanted that moment and he gave it to me. And so, and so I have this, yeah. I have this awesome video of us in Sri Lanka with him giving me a ring and it's not really a typically Arab thing to do or Muslim thing to do, but he did it for me and I love it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's incredible that, you know, even though it's not a tradition, you you still secretly wanted to have it and he gave it to you. Yeah. I love that. It's so sweet. Because, because I think it's more, it, it, it involves me and it's more between us, whereas there are things yeah. in the Arab tradition and the Muslim tradition where it's uh, more like in the engagement. In fact, as the engagement's being announced, I have nothing to do with it. I'm not even in the room. <laughs> when you know it, technically if we were going to do it that way thank god my family isn't that uh, traditional and um my husband isn't that traditional and i'm much more involved and i'm i'm much more validated within my own family so uh, and valued 
so it, it wasn't like that. So I we made our own kind of engagement where he spent a vacation with my family and he got to know my da- my mom and dad and then he uh, he he came and surprised me in Sri Lanka and he did my version of a he gave me a ring which was really <laughs> sweet. <laughs> That probably helped that he met your family before, you know. Is it hard for you to be away from your family? Have you been moved away for a long time? Yeah, I mean, I've gotten, at this point, I've gotten used to living away from my mom because I've been away from my mom since I was 17, um, so living in different countries. But I do miss her very much. Um, So being away from my mom is, is difficult at times, especially right now when I feel like, I don't see an end in sight where I can see her again. Yeah. You know, I don't know when, when, when airports are going to open again. I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know if it's another year. I don't know if it's till next February till I can see my mom again. I don't know, which does add a bit of anxiety. It just makes me a little, it's not so settling, not knowing when I can see my mother. Um, but at least I can video call with her. I can talk with her and, and, and I can stay close uh, somehow. I think, I think Corona is changing the equation of how all of us communicate and how all of us relate to one another. And I think it's going to be a really, really strong shake to to these, um, to some of the misogynist maybe traditions that we have, maybe some of the um, deep seated um, traditions that don't necessarily are, that aren't going to hold up in these times, right? In times where we're being tested this heavily where um, our core is being tested, we're being shaken to our core and we're being asked to wake up and told we need to think on, on a more practical, efficient, effective way in, in terms of everything, in terms of the, the environment, in terms of uh, uh, politics, in terms of economy, in terms of so- socializing. We need to be more effective, more, we need to think about the future. We need to be progressive. And no more being chained down by traditions that are just chaining us down, you know? Yeah, or or wasting our time or our energy or, you know, all of those. Yeah, I agree. Everything just came down to what's important for you in your life. And people are prioritizing those things and everything else is just kind of out of out of the window. It's a liberation. It's yeah. a revolution. Corona is more than just a pandemic. It's a pandemic of a wake-up call, uh, and it's a it's it's a rev- it's a libertarian revolution. We are going to operate differently after Corona. It's going to be a whole new world order, and whoever is ready for it is going to be ready for it. And if you're not, if you didn't catch the train, yep, it's yep. going to be a strong it's going to be a strong wake-up call for you. Yeah, and also for people to to learn to uh, see positivity and happiness and joy, even when there are just so many negative and sad stories. <clears throat> and that that's why I have chosen to talk about weddings and cheer up some couples who are still struggling to make that decision. Oh, yeah. I... I would Go love for to. It, I say. Yeah. Do you want to share a little bit about your what you do when you're I watched a lot of your Instagram stories and I think you have a lot of passion and um, <laughs> beautiful artworks and you do yoga. You want to share a little bit about that? Thank you. Yeah, um, I, I have some of these bottles that I painted behind me. I like painting bottles, but. Um, I, um, I'm a media professional. I used to work as a TV, uh, host as a talk show host. And, uh, I left that job about a year and a half ago, two years ago. Um, I was going to take up another job in Dubai, but instead I found a lot of passion in working in community development. I've been working in community development since before taking on an on-screen job, uh, through a nonprofit organization called Loyak. It's, um, it's a youth organization that I had the privilege of, of uh, being a part of founding. And we founded it in Kuwait. And now there's a branch in Lebanon and in Jordan and in Yemen. And uh, what we do is we empower young people by giving them unique opportunities to excel and to become leaders. And I, I have a lot of love for that, a lot of passion for doing that. And so, um, so in order for me to be effective in doing that, I need to find out what makes me happy and what makes myself tick 
So I explore my my hobbies and my interests a lot. And so I explore painting and yoga and aerial yoga and um, and I, I love animals. So I spend a lot of time caring for animals. I think it makes me a better person. Um, I'm also a filmmaker, so I have a lot of love for cinema. So I founded this uh, film camp that I do in Lebanon and in Kuwait, where I seek young talents in cinema and I develop them and I work with them to make their first film. Um, and so I, I get to do a lot of things that I love and I'm so thankful. I'm blessed for that. I thank the Lord uh, that I get to do that. Um, and I hope uh, I hope I get to go go back to do that. Corona has made me miss seeing a lot of the young people that I work with. Um, I really love being face to face. I'm a hugger. I love hugging. I love physical contact. So this is uh, really tough for me. Yeah. <laughs> and I have a, a work group where where I know that they're they're look they're you know understanding how much I'm suffering not being able to hug them. They're like, oh, Nadia misses hugging us. I re- I really do miss hugging them. So, um, so yeah, so that, that's a little bit about me and what I do. Mm-hmm. Okay, and maybe you can share some of uh, the links and some of your contact information that we can share with the listeners so they can check all of that out. And then sure. before we wrap up this episode, do you have any final advice to couples? I think in uncertain times like these, and we are definitely living in uncertain trying times, um, I'm, I'm so much, I'm very much the go for it girl, but I think every bride is different. I think some brides would rather write it out and have a perfect wedding, you know, down the line. But to me, seize the day. Like if you have today, (laughs) seize the day. I I wouldn't want to, it's, it's really about the love that you have. And, and if you can make it mean something to you too, something memorable, something that's just so crazy and romantic and sweet and memorable to you. I think that's all that really matters, uh, much more than the perfect caterer and the perfect floral arrangements and the perfect, uh, um, you know, uh, dress and the perfect uh, amount of guests. And believe me, it's a lot more headache. It's months and months of headache for about two or three hours of, of a stressful events. I mean, I, I don't think any bride has been completely stress-free on her wedding unless she has made it stress-free for herself. Um, so I would say go for it. Seize the day. If you have today, take it. Excuse me. <clears throat> it's interesting times to take a cough. Now, and if you were in a public place and, and you coughed once, everybody stares at I you. I know. <laughs> I'm scared to go to the... And when I go and to the to, store... Excuse, you have to be like, it's not a corona cough, okay? It wasn't a corona sneeze. Please. <laughs> I, I am corona free, I promise. I've been in a house for a month. <laughs> right? <laughs> I've been in quarantine. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it coming, especially coming from somebody who's been hosting uh, events and planning events, if somebody like you says that it's just live in a moment and go for it, I think that couldn't come from a better person, this advice, right? Yeah, yeah. I catered my own wedding. After we took the pit photos, I went back in the kitchen and I cooked again. Right. On both days. On both days, I just went back in and cooked one of my, my husband's favorite food and I put it on the table we ate. <laughs> like that, I mean yes. and it, it's still really special you give the day value and I think the love between you gives it value and if you're really happy looking into each other's eyes I think that's the most important thing and um yeah you yeah. make it special yeah finding a special outfit finding a special item like a tree or anything and a you corner know, that you can of the fi- tree exactly <laughs> the tree was everything for me yeah oh i love that thank you so much <laughs> nadia to be- thank you Edith. did i say thank your you. name good <laughs> yeah Nadia, no, no, Nadia, Nadia drives me crazy. Oh my gosh! Okay, <laughs> Nadia, say that again. you did it good. You did good. Okay, <laughs> Nadia, thank it you so much. It was such so a pleasure much. talking to you, Edith. Yes, it was so much fun. Thank you for your time, and um, yeah, thank you for being here. <laughs>